building an Alder Lake gaming PC. You wouldn't expect that from this channel. I'm going to show you how to build a truly next generation gaming machine with the latest 12th generation Intel CPUs, DDR5 memory, PCI generation 5, and of course a super hot graphics card to tie it all together that's going to be perfect for high refresh rate gaming at high resolution in the latest titles. So join me and rub your PC gaming hands together as you prepare for this epic PC build after a short word from this video sponsor. Lexar's Hades Memory is here to brighten up your gaming PC. Available in super fast speeds and multiple kit sizes, Lexar's Hades gives you the performance that your PC desires, all whilst looking absolutely stunning in the process. Overclocking is simple thanks to XMP 2.0 support and RGB lighting made easy with Lexar's RGB sync software as well as motherboard control with all of the leading brands. Learn more today with that link down below. Let's get started and there is some seriously impressive stuff on this bench. We've got NZXT's brand new case of one that's actually all about airflow from NZXT. It's pretty crazy really because I think everything on this desk is very exciting. We've got DDR5 memory, the latest Intel chips, PCI generation 4 SSDs, brand new motherboards, some rubbish that I seem to have left on the desk. Can I get it in the bin from here though? No. Oh yes, and we also have Corsair's a brand new liquid cooler that actually has a screen on it. I wonder where they got this idea from. <coughs> NZXT. As always though, we will be kicking off our build with the motherboard, and this one is brand stinking new. This is a Z690 motherboard, and I do want to be very clear about this. ASUS has sent this out, this is the Maximus Z690 Hero, and if you're building this just for gaming, don't think that this is a necessity. Yes, Z690 is expensive, but you don't have to go for something quite as expensive as this. I'll tell you what though, if you do want a high-end motherboard, this pretty much has every feature you could ever want. I really like the new design language actually, you've got almost like this digital bit effect I guess. Not only does this support the larger socket size and the 12th generation chips, but this also has PCI generation 5 on two different slots, not directly for the SSDs. However, if I go back into the box to show you an accessory, which wouldn't normally be that exciting, but here we actually get their sort of M.2 module. So you can put two generation four SSDs in this, but the thing that really makes this stand out is you can actually populate one of these slots with a PCI generation five SSD. And I don't even know if these exist yet. Because this is a big brain channel, we're gonna grab our motherboard and I'm gonna place it on the box because this is the best way to build. And then we grab our CPU. And this is indeed the PC centric edition of the 12700K. That is a joke, they just run out of packaging. And a lot of you are probably Probably wondering why we're using an i7 when the i9 exists well the simple answer is that it is a lot cheaper it's around about 150 to 200 dollars less and in terms of gaming performance there's not really that much in it and in fact I tested this in a video last week so if you want to see the performance difference in games between the i5 the i7 and the i9 you can find that video in the top right corner of your screen that will answer all of your questions but spoiler alert the i7 and the i9 are pretty much the same oh sorry guys the washing is done my towels have just finished and I I need to put them in the tumble dryer. You can tell them in the kitchen because of the echo. When we open up your slots, you'll probably notice a couple of things. Firstly, the socket actually folds downwards, which is a little bit different, a little bit quirky. But then the physical size of this has actually increased because when we get our CPU and we do drop it down into place in the usual way, you should see that the CPU itself is also a fair bit bigger. And the reason for this is because there's actually now more going on under the hood. You've got efficiency cores, you've got performance cores, and together they just make a better CPU that is gonna be better for gaming. And of course for work, but we don't talk about that on this channel. Cameraman Gareth, I'm actually filming a video. What are you doing? What do you want? You've got a survey to do near Chatham, okay. You're saying you want to come visit? You got your filming and then put it on your, your acting voice for... Uh... Acting voice? What's that? How rude. Don't sound like that real life. <laughs> There is actually one other thing to report with this motherboard that is pretty cool, and that's that ASUS have actually put some legacy mounting hardware in here. I say legacy, it's still pretty current, it's LGA 1200, and this essentially means if you've already got a cooler that doesn't have a new mounting bracket for 1700, you should be able to fit this without really any issue. Onto our memory now, and here we have some DDR5. This is the brand new Trident Z from G-Skill. I believe this is the silvery white, but you can also get a black. It definitely is worth noting, by the way, that these DDR5 boards are not backwards compatible, and you can't put DDR5 in a DDR4 board or vice versa. So you do have to pick from the start. If you are looking to save some money, you can go for a DDR4 motherboard that will be cheaper in the first place, and the RAM will also cost you a lot less. But obviously it's not as fast, and you can't get such high capacities. And I'm doing that thing where I 
start floating again. It's now time to install our SSD, and yes, PCI Generation 5 SSDs aren't currently here yet, so we're going for a Gen 4 one. This one is from PNY Accelerate, it's called the CS3040. It definitely isn't the absolute fastest one out there, but when it comes to value for money, it's actually pretty close to Generation 3 SSDs, so you're getting all of that extra speed for not that much extra outlay. Having said that though, this does actually come in two flavours, one with a heatsink and one without. It's not that there's anything wrong with the heatsink, it's just that you're paying extra money for it and on a motherboard like this you really don't need it. Let's remove the larger heatsink then, that's on the motherboard itself, then grab our SSD and gently insert this into the slot, and then put the cover back on. With the motherboard combo complete, we can now move on to something I think you guys have been waiting a long time for, the case. This is the H510 Flow. Go with the flow. One of the main criticisms that I've seen with this online is that it is perhaps a little bit lazy because the only thing that is different about this is the cover. You don't get any RGB fans as standard in this, which is a little bit of a shame, but I assume that is actually factored into the price. Cable management is very easy thanks to this bar, and when you turn it around, you've got different channels as well to route all of your cables through, SSD caddies, and when you look on the front, you do also have USB Type C and a USB Type A. However, for a case that calls itself the flow or the airflow, it is a little bit disappointing to see that they haven't actually opened this up, so you can't put a 240 at the top. So if you're using an all in one liquid cooler like we will be in this video, then then you're forced to put this at the front. So there's nowhere else that you can put it. And again, in a case that calls itself the airflow, why are you limiting airflow options? It's just a bit strange. We'll grab our motherboard. You'd normally lay this down, but I'm gonna go beast mode and just drop this into place now. The next thing that we're gonna use today is this, the first Corsair LCD liquid cooler that you can put GIFs on, or is it GIFs? Let me know in the comments down below. Essentially, this is just a variation on the H100i Elite, and I think you can actually upgrade your existing cooler if you have one of those. But here it is, doesn't really look too different to other things on the market, other than it is a fair bit thicker. And then of course, you have that absolutely huge screen on the front itself. It also comes with the latest Corsair controller, that means you don't need two different units, just one to do your fan speed and your fan RGB. And the fans themselves are the new ML Pro Elites. One of the reasons that I actually went for this cooler this time is because it does come with a hardware for Intel 1700 in the box. So we'll grab our bracket and feed it through the hole. Screw these two-way screws into the bracket itself. We're then going to make some room at the front by removing this stock fan. It's all been neatly wired in, so it's time to unneaten it. Grab our fans, setting up the orientation so that the cables come out on the appropriate side of the case so you can manage them, and obviously so that the airflow is actually facing the direction that you want it to go. When you are done though, you can then just pick up the entire unit, and this should now just slot into place, and then we can just fix it back down, and then this should quite easily just lay over the top of those mounts, and you can grab the thumb screws, and then just fit this down till it's safe and secure. Then you've got your bundle of joy to unwrap. Most of them will then fold and go at the top. Just route it through as neatly as you can. But then you also have this little dummy CPU cable that you will plug into your CPU fan connector. So the motherboard actually thinks that there is a cooler in here, because there is. Find the cable that we just fed through and plug it in to the top. We've got 3M tape on the back, so we're gonna stick this where one of our SSD bays would go. I am going to use an extra ML fan, so I'm gonna replace the one that we have at the back. Ultimately, it's RGB or go home, or almost certainly go home and RGB, unless you're taking your computer with you everywhere all the time. And now comes the fun, fun, fun bit. I'm actually plugging all of these in. Each fan has two different cables, one for the fan speed and one for the RGB, but it is very straightforward because you just plug them in with RGB on the left and fan speed on the right. You can then also plug in your front panel connections as well as your USB and your HD audio. Oh, we are getting there, I promise. It's now time to put our power supply in. I'm sorry I'm getting slightly weepy eyes. I don't know what's going on. Clearly I'm tired, I need more sleep. I'm too busy thinking about stats and transistors. This is the MWE Gold 650, and this is a great choice for this build because you're not really paying any more than you need to, but you're still getting great wattage and great efficiency. Obviously, if you're gonna go crazy with the overclocking and you're gonna put like an RTX 3080 Ti or 3090 in this, then I think going for something near 1000 would be a good bet. Maybe even 850 is a great balance, but for the graphics card that we're using here today, this should be ideal. It's essentially a game of Jenga, but with a PC case to get everything in. You keep tossing and turning it 
until it falls over. I don't think that's how you play Jenga. But either way, with the fan facing downwards, you just drop this into the bottom basement and you screw it in at the back. We are also going a little bit crazy today because we're also adding even more RGB with some RGB power cable extensions. Because we can. The CPU power connection connects here at the top left. The Corsair RGB hub needs some SATA power. We can then bring our very large ATX connection through this little chamber at the top. Now we can grab our most gaming-y component. This is the RTX 3070 Ti from Pallet. Now the 3070 Ti is a bit of an interesting one because it's not really a card that we needed. I think eight gigabytes of VRAM is still a little bit low, especially if you are gonna be playing at 4K. However, this is obviously a faster card than the RTX 3070, which is already pretty crazy to be honest with you. And if you do wanna play say ultra wide, maybe 1440p, 165, maybe 240 Hertz, then this is a brilliant card to do it. Let's get our PC prepared though, by removing the two slots for the graphics card. Then we can pick up our 3070 Ti and just gently drop it into place give it a good old push two PCIe power connections and then we're done obviously we still do have the cable management to complete but I do think that does look pretty good actually it is a shame that the PCIe cables didn't complete the look down the bottom but there may be a way around this so we see if it works please work we once again use a 4k monitor for testing this is the ergo monitor that LG supplied last year actually plug in our computer Keyboard, mouse, and mouse mat. And then I believe we are ready to test. Well, there's a big error screen on the LCD, but that is now gone. That is ridiculously sharp, actually. That looks pretty cool. Oh, right at the critical moment. Someone's at the front door. It works! Hello. Oh, it's you, hello. Okay, new CPU installed. It's gone into the BIOS successfully. There is our i7-12700K. It's found our Windows 11 installation disk. And then it should just be a case of following the instructions and then booting into Windows and then loading up some games. So give me a couple of hours to get started and I'll see you there. Here we are then, all set up in Windows 11 and ready to go. Now that it's completed, I really have to say this is one heck of a good looking system. NZXT have really nailed the tint of the glass on this. You can still see through and see all of your gorgeous components and it lets all of the RGB lighting do the talking, but then it's dark enough that you can't actually see any of those cables or anything really particularly messy. But let's get on with the game, shall we? With some Apex Legends, some Battlefield, some Call of Duty, and what was the other game? Far Cry 6, yeah. This is running at absolute max settings, 4K, and as you can see, we're in the new map. This is actually the first time that I've seen it. It definitely looks a whole lot brighter. And I mean, just look at that frame rate, around about 100 to 120 FPS at 4K max settings. That is pretty incredible. It really goes to show that even if you want to play on a 4K monitor or a 4K TV, then this PC can definitely handle it. If you're more of a 1440p gamer, then you probably notice that we've actually hit the frame rate cap on this game that can be removed, but this clearly shows you that 165 hertz gaming is not gonna be a problem for this system whatsoever. Let's move on to the game that I've been the most excited for, the brand new one some Battlefield 2042. This is running at absolute max settings at 4K with DLSS and ray tracing enabled. It looks absolutely fantastic. I don't think I've seen a game look quite this good yet, actually. But when you look at the frame rate, I think things get even more exciting, around about 70 to 75 FPS. Obviously, this is multiplayer when frame rate is king, so around about 120 FPS is probably what you're gonna be aiming for. But the fact that this PC can actually run this game at these settings, I think is remarkable. Turning things down to 1440, and we do see a decent increase. So we're currently getting 96 and we're gonna go into the options menu. We'll scroll all the way down to ray tracing and we will turn this off. And then you'll see we get an absolutely massive increase to around about 120 FPS. Next up, we have my single player game of choice. This is some Far Cry 6. This is running at absolute max settings. Again, 4K. This is with ray tracing. And again, we're getting around about 60, 65 FPS, depending on when and where we are in the game. Of course, if you're a PC gamer that loves to play at 1440p, then you're gonna be pretty impressed here. You can get much closer to that magic 100 FPS mark. We're not quite there with around about 85 FPS, but this is easily gonna give you a little bit more fluidity, a little bit more smoothness, and overall, perhaps a slightly more enjoyable experience. 
experience. Let's press on to our final title and the one that you guys are always most excited about, some Call of Duty Warzone, once again running at 4K, max settings with ray tracing disabled and DLSS enabled. Interestingly, we are actually getting a little bit of stutter in this game. It's the first time I've seen this on an Alder Lake system, so I'm not entirely sure exactly what's going on, but I'm definitely seeing these weird drops to around about 30. It might just be this particular install. It could be this session. There is something to be aware of. Lowering it down to 1440p and our frame rate truly skyrockets. Now we're looking at around about 120 FPS. And then finally we have 1080p as they actually get into a firefight and sadly I have not made it. Let's see if we can improve in the Gulag as our frame rate now hits new highs at around about 160, 170 FPS. Oh! Yes! We did it! Let me know your thoughts on this system down in the comment section below. What do you make of this case? Is it what you've been asking for for ages or do you think it is a little bit lazy? And as always, if you do want to check out current pricing on anything featured in this video, you can find everything linked down below with my Amazon affiliate links. And while you're down there, don't forget to check out our sponsor. Introducing Lexar M.2 SSDs, the smartest way to play your games. The NM620 is a PCIe drive that offers the perfect blend of capacity, speed and value. There are no wires to connect, simply drop drop it into a compatible slot, secure it in place, and you're away. If you're after the absolute cutting edge of PC performance, Lexar even has the NM800, a PCI Generation 4 SSD with read speeds up to 7,400 megabytes a second. That is just crazy. Learn more today with that link down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.